What's up guys, my name is Dari and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Now that we have set up our database connection and went over the basics, we need to input data inside our database. And if we hop to MySQL, we can do this by writing down our own queries inside the command line. So let's say that we want to insert into posts, the tables title and body, and the values are, this is my first post, and the value of the body is body of the first post. Since we have set our ID to auto increment, we don't need to increase it automatically inside the query. Let's hit enter. You can see that one row has been affected. Let's write down select all from posts. And you can see that we have one row inside our table right now. And don't look at the created as an updated as. That will come later on. My issue is that this took way too long. And this is for only one post. What we could do is to use our model factories, which is basically a pattern for creating fake entries for our database tables. So it's just adding dummy data inside our tables based on the data types that we've passed in inside our migration. By default, every factory that we have is named after an Eloquent class, but you could also name them after the table if you're not working with Eloquent. So let's hop to the code because I want to show you where our factories are stored. So right inside our database folder, we have a factories folder. So let's open it. By default, you could see one factory, which is the user factory. So let's open it. Right here, you can see that there is a default user factory class, which extends the main factory class. So let's click through on the factory class. Let's see what's going on over here. In the factory class, you can find a lot of properties and static factory methods patterns that we could use. Let's scroll down because right here you could see a factory instance of a given number. We could create a new factory instance. We could get the raw attributes and way more things that we could do. Let's see. Well, if I scroll down, we have more than 700 lines. And since I can't cover them all, I just want you to take a minute and scroll through them to see the power of factories. And if you're done, let's continue on with this video by going back to our users factory. All right, let me open it again. We have a function where we're defining our user model factory. We're returning an array right here with a couple of fields. And this is an associative array with the name of name, email, email verified at, password, and remember token. And these are not randomly added right here. Since we want to insert dummy data inside the database, the keys of this array need to be the same as the column names. So what we can do is to go to iTerm, let's desk users. And right here, you can see the ID, name, email, email verified at, password, and the other stuff. So if you go to the Visual Studio Code, we're basically adding everything that's right here inside the database. Now the values that we are trying to set, so this faker name, this faker unique, are created with a faker property that we have which is the faker PHP library that allows us to generate random data for testing. What I would like to do right now is to generate a new factory class. So let's hop to the command line. Let me open the new tab. And right here, I want to use a command called PHP artisan. And we want to make something again, which is a factory called post factory. All right, let's hit enter. Our factory has been created. Let's hop to Visual Studio Code and let's open our post factory, which has the same structure as our user factory. We're pulling in the post model and we're creating a property called model, which is equal to the class of post. But let's say that you don't want to use this specific model that we have. So the post model, you don't want to change it manually by setting it equal to, let's say, user. For that, we could use another command. But before we perform it, Let's remove this file for a second. Now let's hop to the terminal once again. And in here, let's hit the arrow up and let's add a flag to it of double dash model is equal to post. We could also set it equal to user, but for now, but let's just set it equal to post because that's what we need. All right, let's save it. Let's hop back to Visual Studio Code again. We have our post factory again. Let's keep it easy for ourselves. 
Let's go to the users factory and let's copy the entire return array. Now let's replace it inside of our host factory. All right, we don't need our remember token for a post and we also don't need our password. All right, let's change the name to the title. Let's set it equal to this faker, but not the name, but the title. Let's change the email to body. And let's get rid of unique safe email and let's set it equal to a paragraph. What do we have next? We could also add the created underscore add, which is equal to now. But with the release of Laravel 8, we need to change a couple things right here. We need to use another import called illuminate backslash support backslash str. And instead of saying post colon colon class, we need to write down backslash app backslash models backslash. So we need to write down the entire path to the post model. And don't forget to add the first backslash in front of app, otherwise it won't start at the root directory. And that's what we need. Now I want to use PHP Artisan Tinker right now, and I won't go in depth about it because I want to make a complete video about it later on. But for now, just follow along. We could also use seeding, but that's not what I prefer to use because I think PHP Artisan Tinker is way stronger. So let's save it. Let's hop to our command line. Let's write down PHP Artisan Tinker. And this will basically redirect us to a shell where we could perform a lot of stuff. What we could do right here is to set our entire path to the model. So app backslash models backslash post. Then double colon because we want to call the factory global helper. So let's write down factory. And then we want to create a new row. So pointer create. Let's hit enter. And right now you can see that we created one row with dummy data right here. We have a title, we have a body, the created at, updated at, and we have our auto increment ID. We could also add more than one row. So let's hit the arrow up again. And right after factory, we could call another method, which has the name of count. And inside the count parentheses, we need to specify the amount of rows that we want to add. So let's say two, hit enter, and we created two more posts. Before I wrap up the video, let's go to MySQL. And in here, let's say select all from posts. And you can see that we have added three new rows inside our post table. Just as easy as that. This was it for this video about factory models. If you do like my video and you want to see more, or you just want to support the channel, just click on the subscribe button down below and don't forget to like the video.